What's going on guys, my name is Matt and 10 years in terms of technology is a very long time. Many pieces of tech from 2009 are basically unusable in modern tasks due to lack of support for modern standards or just sheer lack of computational power. Because of this, I started to think about how CPUs from 2009 would perform in modern tasks. While basic stuff like word processing and video streaming I'm more than certain could be handled fine by most of the CPUs from that era, I wanted to see how a mainstream CPU from that time would perform in modern gaming. So what I decided to do was take this guy, the i7870, and pair it with a modern graphics card to see how it would perform against some of 2019's most difficult to run games. The i7870 released in September of 2009, making it over nine and a half years old, again pretty much ancient in terms of technology. The CPU is based on the 45 nanometer Linfield architecture. The MSRP for this CPU listed on Intel's website was $305 at the time with the current selling price on eBay being right around $40. With 4 cores, 8 threads, and an unlocked multiplier, the CPU was an absolute beast at the time. It was able to pretty much handle anything you threw at it. Even though we do have 8 core mainstream CPUs now, 4 cores and 8 threads was the most you could get on a mainstream platform until the release of Ryzen in 2017. Meaning for its time, 8 threads was a lot to have on a consumer level CPU. The CPU fits in the LGA 1156 motherboard Boards, including the basic H55 chipset and the overclocking centric P55 chipset. Quite a number of these P55 boards are available on AliExpress with the one I chose being right around $70. This is definitely a relatively basic board feature wise, but it worked well enough for a quick and dirty overclock of 3.7 gigahertz, which is about 17% faster than its normal all core turbo of 3.2 gigahertz. In terms of RAM, I went with eight gigabytes of DDR3 as this is good enough for almost all games and is pretty typical of what you would pair with this CPU today. The graphics card I paired with this CPU is the AMD RX 470, which is an incredible value for the money right now on eBay now that cryptocurrency mining has crashed. This one I got for only $64 which was an amazing deal. I'm thinking of making a video about what you should look for and do when buying a used mining card like this one, so if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comment section down below. Going into this, I thought the 470 would be good to pair with the CPU as for 1080p gaming the RX 470 is a really great budget option, but I wish I had used a different GPU after analyzing the results and I'll let you know why later in the video. Other parts in this test system included a 450 watt EVGA PSU, Cryorig M9i CPU cooler, an SSD, and this DIY PC case which for around $40 on Newegg is really awesome for the money and I'll have links to all the parts featured in the description down below. In terms of testing, I really wanted to test some of the latest and hardest to run games, and because of that, my benchmarking suite included Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Anthem, Metro Exodus, Far Cry 5, and of course Apex Legends, which is not super hard to run but is probably the most popular game released in 2019 thus far. Going into testing, I honestly wasn't sure how this system would handle these intense games. Starting with Apex Legends, I had most things set to high and a few things at medium. Dropping in, I actually found that the system produced an absolutely amazing experience with an average of 98 FPS and 1% lows of 65. Gameplay was really smooth, there weren't any noticeable and intrusive FPS drops, and I think most everyone would be okay playing Apex Legends on this system. Cranking up the difficulty a little bit, I next tested Far Cry 5, not the latest title ever, but still very modern and still relatively hard to run. At 1080p high settings, this system produced an average of 50 54 FPS with 1% lows of 45. This was pretty impressive that this combo was performing that well in Far Cry 5 at high settings, and a 60 FPS average should be pretty attainable by turning a few of the settings down. Moving on to Metro Exodus, this is truly one of the latest and hardest to run games. I used both the built in benchmark and playing through the first level of the game to see what kind of FPS I would get. At 1080p high settings on the built in benchmark, the system produced an average of 33 FPS with 1% lows of 70. This really wasn't very encouraging, but once in the game itself, frame rates were much better. Playing through about the first 15 minutes of the campaign, I saw an overall average of 77 FPS with 1% lows of 43. With that being said, during intense combat, the FPS hovered at or slightly below 60 FPS with almost no stuttering or major frame drops. Overall, this was a pretty good experience. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was next, and using the built-in benchmark at 1080p medium settings, I saw an average of 58 FPS with 
with 1% lows of 35. This was pretty impressive to see that an almost 60 FPS average was achieved. Finally, the last game I tested was Anthem, a very new and hard to run game. At 1080p medium settings, I tested both outdoors flying around a lot and indoors. Outdoors, the system produced an average of 42 FPS with 1% lows of 3. Inside, the system produced an average of 59 FPS with 1% lows of 34. This was a very mediocre experience. The game was playable, but not at all what I would consider enjoyable. Now, I wasn't super discouraged by the results in Anthem, as I know even a lot of high-end systems have been seeing very poor performance in this game due to poor optimization. Seeing the results from all the benchmarks made me pretty impressed with the CPU's performance, but then I took a closer look at the real-time statistics. I actually saw that in most cases, the GPU was pegged at 100%, and the CPU was hovering closer to 60%. This means the RX 470 was the bottleneck in most cases, and this i7-870 could handle a considerably more powerful GPU, which is something I may test in a future video. Taking this all into consideration, I think the CPU performs really well in modern gaming, especially when you consider it was released nearly 10 years ago. While the 870 is a great CPU, if you're willing to overclock and are interested in a system like this one, going with a Xeon X3440 will save you a good amount of money and give you a very similar experience. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it, consider subscribing, and this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.